everybody's friend It's Tyler It's your only black friend Because your best black friend I wouldn't trade him for another black friend Cause black friends are rare as you should be aware He's mopping Richard Pryor So just sit and stare It's everybody's friend It's Tyler It's everybody's friend It's Tyler Hey guys, Tyler here. So, for this video, I'll be responding to a series of videos that's been done by a fourth grade teacher on TikTok where pretty much she says that she wants to teach fourth graders all about social justice and all that jazz. And so, without further hesitation, let's respond to the videos. It's kind of a video diary for me, but if you're a white teacher who still hasn't talked about what happened at the Capitol, here's what I did and it worked nicely. I just said the facts of what had happened because the kids were curious about it. The president of the United States called for people to walk down there and they did and they broke in and police opened barriers for them to get in, took pictures, there was backup called after things got bad. Um, people were eventually escorted out of the building and not arrested. The president did make a statement for them to leave and go home, but it was after everything had already kind of happened or at least started. I showed them a picture of the police presence at the Black Lives Matter movement and then I showed them a picture of the police presence at this before things got violent. I didn't show them violent pictures. And then I let them make the comparisons. They had questions they were comparing. We brought it back to privilege and how white people were treated versus how black people were treated in similar situations. I showed them the book Sit In where we talked about defensiveness in white people about race. I find it so curious that the teacher used Black Lives Matter and the event that happened at the Capitol as evidence of white privilege. Now first and foremost, I want to first state the obvious. Throughout the whole entire whole year, like during summer, winter 2020, most people who were like Black Lives Matter or whatever, they were just going out and you know, just rioting. Of course, there were some people who were peaceful, sure, but like a lot of parts and a whole entire America was just rioting and property damage. And of course, at, I guess after they were, you know, finished what they were doing, there has been like at least so far one I've seen so far, no actual announcements of any sort of arrest of the property damage that they have actually committed. However, when I see like, you know, footage of like, you know, what happened at the Capitol, there has been like, you know, reports later on after the event that there were many people who were also, you know, arrested from what they did at the Capitol. So the police in that, situ in that situation actually were acting more to, you know, the Capitol incidents versus Black Lives Matter. So it's kind of safe to say to me at least that Black Lives Matter actually has more privilege than the people who were at the riots for the Capitol. But uh, let's uh, continue on. I told my uncle I was going to make this comparison and here goes. First, we're talking about how the Holocaust started and progressed, not where it ended with concentration camps. I don't think concentration camps with gas chambers would ever happen in America. However, both these men chose someone to blame for the current political and economic issue. Hitler tried to push out the Jews and even had detention centers to hold Jews while they were on their way. Trump blames Mexicans, and there are also child detention centers. Well, it's true that there were some kids that were actually part of detention camps underneath Donald Trump. Who was the person that actually built those cages? Because I can tell you right now, it's not Donald Trump, because the person who actually built those cages were actually underneath Obama. And of course, the vice president underneath Obama was, guess what, Joe Biden. But during the whole entire period, I cannot remember a single time in which Joe Biden actually called out Barack Obama for building those, cons like, you know, those places for detention centers, right? And so... Thanks to people like Obama, we have these detention centers and underneath Biden right now, they are building even more detention centers because of the overflow of illegal immigration that's been happening for the last few months at the southern border. And so, yeah, Donald Trump, of course, has some kids underneath those detention centers, but he was not this person that actually built those, those kind of detention centers at all. Next is nationalism and dehumanizing language. Blood and soil was used by Hitler to show that people who were born in the country and of blood to the country were the purest. Blood and soil was chanted at the Charlottesville attack where Trump backed up the people on both sides. This whole entire both sides debacle is like debunked because Donald Trump did not say that the rioters were actually good people. He clearly mentioned in his speech 
that basically like the people who are not the rioters were nice people. And so this whole entire thing has been debunked like a long time ago. And of course I'll provide a link for you guys to see the video because so, I don't want to, you know, say this whole entire thing again. Propaganda was also a huge part for both these men. They spew anti-media and anti-anybody who's against them, any candidate against them. Trump calls Joe Biden Sleepy Joe and retweets people calling Hillary a skank and the governor of Georgia fat. They're both reluctant to give away too much power. Trump even makes decisions without talking to everyone in an executive office. And I wouldn't blame him either. Look, I'm not a fan of, like, you know, Donald Trump or Joe Biden. I'm not a fan of any type of politician, really, because they all seem to be super corrupt. However, that being said, it's very, you know, safe to say that the media cannot be trustworthy, who, no matter who said it, of course. As a matter of fact, compare how the media treated Donald Trump in comparison to Joe Biden. Because no matter if, like, Joe Biden did something bad, like all his sort of, you know, racialized comments about minorities that he has done lately, the media does not cover that at all. Versus if Donald Trump were to say something about minority, they would be over his ass any type of day of the week. And so the treatment of both people is completely different by the media. And so you have to be super blind to not see that the media has a clear bias for Joe Biden in comparison to Donald Trump. I'm a fourth grade teacher and I do a lot of work with social justice and equity in my classroom. We have racialized conversations all the time. I find it so strange that so many of these teachers or politicians as of lately just push for this idea of equity. Because equity in this sort of buzzword sense means equality of outcomes. So what's the difference between equality of outcomes and equality of opportunity? Equality of opportunity is largely based upon meritocracy so no matter your race, no matter your sexuality, you'll be chosen for that job based upon your qualifications. Whereas equality of outcomes is the exact opposite because you are in fact being hired based upon your race, based upon your sexualities, based upon things that you cannot control. And so this whole entire idea that this teacher is openly saying that she wanna push this idea to hire people based upon her race, based upon her sexuality because they're underrepresented. It's kind of stupid to me and it's crazy. And my kids have gotten very good at this type of discussion. But there's one thing that keeps coming up that I'm not quite sure how to tackle. Uh, it's the slang with cultural appropriation of slang terms like um, sheesh, they're doing that a lot or like, oh, that's fire. Um, and I don't, I think this one, I'm having trouble knowing how to start the conversation because I don't know what my goal is in the end. And this is where I would like a little feedback from anyone who's willing to give it on TikTok. Am I asking kids not to use the slang that comes up because it's probably culturally appropriated from POC? Or am I asking kids to do the research to find out where things come from and respect those cultures like we have been doing anyways? But I don't know. I just don't know how to start the conversation because I don't know how to end it. To this very day, I don't understand why there's so many people that are debating about this sort of concept of cultural appropriation or cultural appreciation. Because to me, every single time someone advocates for cultural appropriation, it is basically more or less a form of segregation. Because they're saying, well, you see, because you're a certain race, or a certain gender, we cannot share certain things because you're that way. And that is separatism at its purest form. It's almost like something like the KKK will want. Like you see, well you see there's like, you know, certain founders for black people, certain founders for white people, so you two go to the separate founders because you guys are different and we should not share founders. It's the same sort of ideology for these sort of people. And so, I don't necessarily care if people just use black English, black slang, whatever. What I really, you know, care about, of course, is basically, of course, if people like the culture. And when people like to replicate what we do in our culture, I find it to be complimentary. And so, I don't necessarily care about, you know, people using black words or whatever. What I really care about, of course, 
is basically like real life problems. You know, not medical stuff like, you know, stuff like cultural appropriation. The reason the more I argue on Facebook with people, the more they think I hate white people. I don't hate white people. I hate racism. It's not my fault that's often white people. Then they started saying, well, you think you're above it all. I don't. So I wrote this thing. I, Hannah Fannin Steele, am a racist. I am a product of the white dominant structure I was raised in. My people have done an excellent job lifting each other up. Unfortunately, that was on the backs of people of color. Because this is deeply embedded in my history, it is no wonder I was passed down views that are racially problematic. Imagine a sort of self-loading where a person constantly stinks that, of course, the sense of the father is passed down to the son or the daughter. And I don't think that's the case at all. I don't think no one's actually guilty based upon past actions because everybody, like I said many times, are individuals and need to be judged on an individual basis. And so, when I see people like her constantly going on and on and on about how basically the system, of course, he was made to be racist since birth because of the system, it doesn't make much sense to me. Because I don't think, like, her ancestor has, you know, nothing to do with her. I'm gonna just judge her based upon the actions that she has done and not necessarily what ancestors have done. And judging from the video so far, I can say that she is pretty much a stupid cunt. Even though white supremacy can be unconscious, it is constant. Living in this society would have been a miracle for me to be anything but racist. Now that I know I have deeply rooted racist tendencies, I can constantly be looking and listening for how they surface in my life. And when a person of color gives me feedback for not being a good ally, I can say thank you and not get defensive. Something here I said could have been problematic because I'm always learning. But you can't learn unless you try. I find it interesting in the video. How this whole entire thing is just double stink. Like earlier she said that she does not necessarily hate all white people. Now right here she's saying that she was born to a society where she cannot help but to be racist. So by saying that out loud, she's basically saying right here that all white people are born in a society that makes them inherently racist. How can you not say that you hate white people after saying that? It's like a complete, total contradiction, but, um, whatever. Anyway, that's the videos I'm gonna respond to from this crazy lady. Please tell me in the comments down below what you guys think. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.